Retired Navy Senior Chief Steve Meyer sells real estate. If you're buying or selling your home in Florida, call Steve at 904-479-6778. Make sure to tell him Tuttle sent you. Your reasons for listening to this show, well, those are your own. But just keep in mind that the views, information, or opinions expressed on the Tuttle Daily Podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of our sponsors. Yeah, it's called free speech, people. Nobody's forcing you to listen. One-of-a-kind shades made to order by Vaporshades.com. Vapor Shades designs the outer layer of the sunglasses just like a wrap on a car. They customize your sunglasses, marbling the paint. The end result is no two pair of sunglasses are alike. Yours will be completely unique to you. Check us out at Vaporshades.com. Use promo code TUTTLE for 15% off your entire order. Get ready for your daily dose of TUTTLE. Uh, the all-time greatest uh, intern slash producer we've ever had, of course, TUTTLE. Tuttle in Florida. From the Vapor Shades Hobo Fish Camp, it's the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Anarchy! 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 No wonder nobody likes you, Tuttle. Everything's a goddamn debate. Welcome to another edition of the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hope everyone is having a great Wednesday so far. There's a couple of ways you can get a hold of me. You, one being you can email me, Tuttle at gmail.com. That's Tuttle with two Ds, T-U-D-D-L-E at gmail.com. Or you can leave me a voicemail, 407-270-3044. Once again, that is 407-270-3044. Hey, Tuttle, what's up? Uh, just thought I'd let you know a couple of things. Uh, first off, uh, I kind of make my own little uh, Tuttle uh, weekend wrap-up uh, podcast deal where I kind of throw all your daily podcasts together so I can hear it in a, uh, in a long uh, four-hour uh, lumped-together uh, podcast show. I don't know if it's that long, but kind of cool to hear it all at one time, you know, so I can get my catch up on, the, on my daily Tuttles that I can't hear during the week. Uh, maybe as a suggestion, since I brought this subject up, you know, I'll make a little weekend recap if you get a chance, you know, of all your best stuff that you do during the week and uh, put it on your podcast as a little added incentive, you know. I think that would uh, benefit you uh, if, if that's uh, an option for you. And then the other thing is, uh, I was wondering, uh, Brent uh, has mentioned to you a couple of times that uh, you're supposed to be on his podcast. So uh, we're just wondering, there are people in the chat on uh, Brent's uh, Twitch who are wondering, when are you going to be on the show? I know that he's in St. Pete. So if you can get a, find a time to uh, to join Brent, uh, he just had Ricker on his show uh, last, yesterday, which was a really cool show, if you remember Ricker from 98 Rock. And, uh, you know, it'd be great to hear you on there and see you on uh, on Brent's uh, uh, Twitch. You know, that'd be pretty cool. So let us know. Give us an update, will you? Thanks for the voicemail, man, and thanks for supporting the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Yeah, I, I would love to start maybe kind of pitting together like a uh, highlight clip reel from the week to put up on the weekends. I think that would actually be a great idea. Thank you for the suggestion. Uh, to your second question... I am actually going to be in Tampa next Tuesday because I'm going to be on the Bubba the Love Sponge show at 845 on the 16th. Now, I had Brent on my show, and it was a great conversation. I think we both had a really, really good time talking to each other. I thought it was great content that we did with each other. But I also want to check with Bubba first. To make sure, just out of respect to him, because you you know how Bubba can be sometimes. And I, if it's going to be disrespectful to Bubba, I would prefer not to do Brent show. But I don't I don't see where there would be any problem at all. So if Bubba doesn't have a problem with it, then yes, I would be I would love to be able to go on Brent show. I love Brent Hatley. If it wasn't for Brent. I never, ever would have had an opportunity to be able to even get my foot in the door at the BRN. So I don't think it will be a problem. And yes, I'm down. If I have to stay an extra day to be a part of Brent, Brent Hatley's Twitch show, yes, count me in completely. I'm down for it. Now, if you didn't get a chance to catch the Tuttle Daily Podcast live stream last night, it happens every night at 8. On my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Tuttle. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell button because when you hit that bell button, you're going to get alerted any time that I put up any new content or go live. 
but count on me going live at 8 p.m. every single night from the Hobo Fish Camp, just checking in with you guys. I mean, that is my new schedule now. I, I do this podcast, then I work out during the day, help out my family, my mom and my dad, and then I do the stream at 8 on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Tuttle. Now, one of the things that I discussed that somebody brought up, don't know if you guys listened to the Shannon Burke show when it was on Bubba Army Radio, but I was one of the producers. It was myself, Colin Brady, and Rick. And then Shannon was a host. And, and I was in charge of pulling a lot of news, finding audio. And maybe one of the best pieces of audio that I have ever found was something called The Shitting Hooker. Shannon and Colin, I had never heard laugh as hard as they did that day when I played that audio. And it was so good, they actually played it at the beginning of every single show. Oh, girl, quit bullshitting. Come on. I can't do it. Now, I promise I will play this in its entirety without starting and stopping it. But I just want to set the scene. This is an overweight African-American woman, and you really can't see the guy because it's a POV. He's shooting the video, and they are in the back of what looks like a van with Kanye West, Heartless, playing in the background. And the hooker, I guess she's doing this over $20, has a problem with sperm. She, she gets, like, vomitly ill by the taste of it. And I got to tell you, this guy is pretty impressive. He is packing some heat, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you can. Uh, No, I can't. Yeah, you can. Oh, yes, you doing it. I can't do it. I'm going to throw up. How you going to throw up? Well, you got to jack me off something for that 20. You going to do something? See, I wish that I could have the swagger of this guy. Because, yeah, it is $20. And is that what blowjobs are going for now? With uh, hookers, 20 bucks doesn't sound like a bad price. But I would have felt bad for the woman seeing her regret just getting vomitly ill uh, at, from the taste of sperm. Yeah, I, I would feel bad. I would just say, you know what, honey, just take the $20. But no, this dude's like, no, you better do something. Better jack me off or something for that 20 bucks. Oh, man, come on now. You know, come on now. Yeah. Just fine. Just suck it like you're doing. Don't smile, mama. If I'm just being honest, that is the highlight of this whole audio that I'm playing for you. You heard that correct. She said, don't sperm, mama. Was she saying, don't sperm on me? But she said, don't sperm, mama. Or something like that. Let's, let's hear what she said. Don't smile, mama. I won't. I'll let you know. Ooh. Girl, you know what you're doing. Suck that dick. Bullshit. I'm about to come. <laughs> See, I wish I could have the swagger of this guy. He basically said, ooh, girl, quit crying. (laughs) That was awful. The fuck was that? That was some bullshit. Oh, you cold blood. Oh, my cold blood, you gave me some half-ass head. You put that shit in my mouth. I told you I was coming. You ain't hear me say that shit? Nah. Made me shit on myself. Yes, you heard that right. She said, you made me shit on myself. And what I mean by shit on herself, this wasn't even diarrhea. It was a log she laid down, got it all over her leg and everything, after gagging from the taste of semen. Yes, that's why this is called the shitting hooker. Oh, hell no. Uh, you got to be shitting me. When I throw up, what I do. You ain't got no other towel, you? No, I ain't got no other towel. Throw away with your shit on it, no. It's nice to know that the classic still hold up. Because it does. Like I said, I'm going to play this in its entirety for you guys to be able to listen to. But when I come back after the break, my interview with Mike Messier, director, actor, producer, film critic, Right after the break, you are listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Oh, girl, quit bullshitting. Come on. I can't do it. 
Yeah, you can. Uh, uh, no, I can't. Yeah, you can. Oh, yes, you doing I can't do it. Oh, I'm gonna throw up. How you gonna throw up? Well, you gotta jack me off something for that 20. You gonna do something? Oh, man, come on now. Ain't no come on now. Shit. You're doing just fine. Just suck it like you're doing. Don't smile, mama. I won't. I'll let you know. Woo! Girl, you're doing just Suck that dick. Bullshit, man. About to come. <laughs> I told you about the car. Oh, girl. <laughs> that was awful. The fuck was that? That was some bullshit. Oh, you cold blood. I'm not cold blood. You gave me some half ass head. You put that shit in my mouth. I told you I was coming. You ain't hear me say that shit? Nah. Made me shit on myself. Hell. Oh hell no! Uh. You got to be shitting me. See when I throw up, that's what I do. You ain't got no other towel, do you? No, I ain't got no other towel. Uh. Throw away with your shit on it. No. DJ nerd. I've only been arrested one time. A radio personality. Professionally, I'm not in the best position that I've ever been in. And hot talk satirizer? You would think with everything that's going on, a Caucasian like myself wouldn't be able to randomly talk to an African-American or a minority. You're listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Wish you could have just flown and had your vehicle arrive a day or two later so you can enjoy more time doing what's important to you? Well, you can. Just give Starfire Transport a call. Let the professionals do the driving while you're flying. Starfire Transport specializes in RV and auto transport. They'll also haul watercraft from boats to PWCs, cargo trailers, and more. Service available throughout the continental United States. So don't wait. Call Brian today at 574-349-4193 or 989-751-6106 for your next move. 10% off for veterans past or present. Also, make sure to tell them Tuttle sent you for an additional discount. That's Starfire Transport. Do you have something you want to say? Hey, what kind of preacher is you? Leave Tuttle a voicemail. Because you're kind of ignorant. Especially if you think he's being an asshole. No mega bitch. Will your hurtful comments offend Tuttle? No, baby. Call the show at 407-270-3044. No, baby. All right, welcome back to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. I have a guy that I think think lives in the Florida area up in Jacksonville, and I've been kind of interested in this. My next guest is Mike Messier. Mike, how are you? I'm good, Total. I'm very good. I am in the Atlantic Beach section of Jacksonville. I've lived here for about 16 months. Before that, I lived in New England, specifically uh, Rhode Island. So uh, here why, I am why, now. Why Jacksonville, though? A friend of mine uh, named Harrison moved here about seven years ago with his wife, Debbie, and uh, Harrison's a guy that I trust. And, uh, you know, he, he's one of these analytical guys. So he did like this whole research, the database mm -hmm. evaluation of the world and came up with Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, we have similar sensibilities. So mm -hmm. I checked out the area in February of 2019. I took a road trip from Rhode Island. on the. I started the day of the Super Bowl, the, mm -hmm. the uh, Patriots won, and I I went to Maryland to see a friend. We watched the Super Bowl mm -hmm. there, and then I went to North Carolina, and here I am. Uh, I, I did a I did a checkout, and then I decided to go ahead and move here mm -hmm. six months later. Now, so you bring up the Patriots. What? Uh, so I I take it you are a uh, Patriots fan, then, right? I consider myself more of a Tom Brady fan, you know. Yeah. Total... So, so what do you think? <laughs> what do you what do you think of you know like? I mean, that's pretty impressive, man, because. I am a Miami Dolphins fan sure. and, and Tom Brady being in the AFC East, like he was, I kind of hated him, but to see him win another Super Bowl, I can't deny it. He is the greatest of all time, even well, though I love Dan Marino. Right. 
Well, here's the thing, you know, Tuttle, and, and maybe it's our society, but we view things like that based on Super Bowl victories, you know, how many rings mm. do you have? And right now Tom's in the front with seven. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I, I did a video on my YouTube channel, the Mike Messier YouTube channel, where I, I thoroughly explained that I moved to Florida and about six months later, here was Tom. So that might be a coincidence. It might not. But for me, uh, society has to sometimes respect the individual. If you've ever read, uh, mm-hmm. read Anne Rand, you know, uh, you, 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 know uh, you realize that it's the, the individual sometimes that's held back by society. And uh, in the case of my book, A Distance from Avalon, When the Dying and the Dead Reunite, that's a theme for the character of Joe Humble and, and similar to Tom Brady. You know, he was not given, even with six Super Bowl victories, some people were saying, well, he's part of the program. He's part of the system. Maybe everybody they didn't thought realize. it was Belichick. Everybody right. thought it was Belichick. But I, 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 I think it's because Tom Brady is just a leader. He, he gets people to, to elevate their game. That's right. And as a filmmaker myself, that's one thing that I strive to do is if I'm making films, I'm trying to elevate the game of the actors that I'm working with. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to teach them uh, processes for memorizing lines. For, and really what I'm good at, uh, Tuttle, as, as an acting coach and a filmmaker, is helping actors get the most out of those words on the page. Because if you just read the script flat, you're not going to get anywhere. No, 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 no. I, I agree. Now, uh, you're you're talking about directing you know we you know they have writers that write scripts and stuff but i think some of the best acting that i've ever seen has been when people have ad-libbed or or gone off script like here i'll give you an example leonardo dicaprio in the movie django unchained at that table scene where he cut his hand you know, he kept going with the scene. Everybody thought like, oh, man, that was planned with the bloody hand. Because remember when he pounds his hand on the table and he has the blood? Right. Uh, you know, a lot of people thought that that was planned, but it was not. Well, here's the thing. Without that script, without the script being written first, and, you know, Tarantino, I'm assuming, wrote that script. I'm not sure if he had a Well, he's a heavy dialogue type person, too. Right. So. But here's my point. If it, without the script being there as the template or as the starting point, DiCaprio's got nothing. You yeah. know what I mean? So we, we can laud the actors. And, hey, I'm all for lauding actors myself. But without someone having the idea, someone, first of all, you got to produce this thing. you got to finance it. Mm-hmm. You've got to have the logistics with with me talking about the level of a Tarantino and DiCaprio. You, you have big bucks. I mean, there's got to be big bucks. So, sure, DiCaprio can go in there and he can improv and he can do this and that. And that's great. But without the people and talking about the crew members, I mean, without the without the best mm-hmm. boy, without the grips, without the production assistants, without every single person on that team contributing their time and their effort, DiCaprio doesn't have that platform no. to show his greatness. No, I agree with you. But if you look at Di- DiCaprio's career, he has worked with some really great directors. Look, look at Danny Boyle. He worked with, I know it wasn't Danny Boyle's greatest movie, but he, uh, Leonardo was in The Beat, with, uh, directed by Danny Boyle. And Danny Boyle, you know, I remember when I was just an intern here in Orlando, I told uh, the host because I, I booked a lot of the guests. I said, you got to get this director on. And, and my host never even heard of him. I said, you got to get Danny Boyle on. He's got this movie, Blumdog Millionaire, that Ooh. is going to be huge. OK, yeah. And, it, and I had to beg and then he finally did it. And the interview was amazing. OK, but they really didn't like think anything of it until a couple of months later when he wins best picture for for a best picture best director for slumdog millionaire and they were like oh you got to go dig up that interview because we want to play it now right well that's that's the thing everybody loves a success story and everybody loves to bandwagon and nothing attracts a crowd like a crowd you know what i mean uh, what, what what is your <laughs> or, i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt Oh, I'm just saying that uh, that's not surprising to me, uh, Tuttle. You know, when, when people are successful, then other people from the woodwork comes out and says, oh, my God, I knew that guy, and I worked with that lady, and we did this together. And, 
here, you know what I mean? And here's a photograph of me from the eighth grade with this guy, but, but nobody will ever say, Hey, you know, here's a photograph of me with that guy from the eighth grade, but I was a bully to this guy or I disrespect or I disrespected him or, and it's, it's one of those things where, um, like I said, nothing attracts a crowd like a crowd. You know, you, you, you know what I mean? And it's just, I, one I those, agree. So uh, now let me ask you, okay. So if you were going to give me your Mount Rushmore, which is four people of directors, who would your Mount Rushmore directors be? That's a great question. I mean, I, I'm not going to, I'll say my own personal favorites. Yeah, I personal. Think, yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I, because sometimes people say, these are the greatest. And I have an issue with that. You know, when people say these are the greatest of anything, it's usually invalid because how is anyone going to rank things as the greatest? But for me, personal favorite, I'd probably start with Spike Lee. Uh, Spike. What's your me, favorite movie? What's your favorite movie of his? Well, I'd probably, uh, blah, 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 either... Mine's the 25th hour. Mine's the 25th hour. Yeah, I like that one a lot. You know, what was the one he did with um, John Leguizamo, uh, Summer of Sam? Was that it? So, oh, Sam? yeah, 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 Summer of Sam, yeah. I that, think that, that was a good one. Uh, to be honest, Tuttle, I think I even had a tear at the end of the movie, and it wasn't because there was a dramatic arc that caused me to be emotional. It was because of the greatness of the film. Have you... So. Have, have you noticed in Spike Lee films, he gives an actor that he loves to do like these monologues. Do you remember uh, Ed Norton and the 25th hour looking into the mirror and he goes off on that big rant and then uh, in do the right thing, uh, you know, that whole scene where like all the different races and cultures were like talking shit about each other and stuff. Oh, sure. I, 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 I love what he does good you know and he's great and uh spike what i loved about spike tuttle is that he is consistently he got game. chances he oh, got yeah. game oh my god that let, think about this is this is how good of a director spike lee is he was able to take an nba player and 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 make him look like he was a veteran actor in my opinion right right the guy from the Celtics. Uh, the yeah, Ray player. Allen. Ray Allen, yeah. So, I mean, what a what a career achievement. It's funny that Ray, as far as I know, never went back to acting because uh, he, maybe he should have or maybe he just didn't interest him. Maybe he felt like he did, you know, the, the greatest thing he could do with Spike. As far as the other three directors, I, I would probably go ahead and put Tarantino on that uh, Rushmore. And as far as my favorite film of his, it's got to be Pulp Fiction. Um it's funny, yeah. Tuttle. I actually, you made the Diego Unchained reference. I actually haven't seen that one. For whatever reason, that's the one Spike, uh, the one Tarantino film I haven't seen. Uh, moving on to the third spot, uh, I might go with uh, Orson Welles. You know, I mean, it, really? it, it was just Citizen Kane to me. Uh, look, that's before either one of our times. But if you put yourself back into the audience, you know, of that movie theater back in whatever year it was, the 1940s, and you're seen there in a suit because people used to wear suits to go to the movie theater and they used to play <laughs> the, the national anthem. And so going to the cinema, the theater was such a bigger deal, Tuttle. I mean, that was like, oh, uh, you know what I mean? That was date you night. You don't have to tell me. You do not have to tell me. OK, it has been over a year since I've been to a movie theater because of the pandemic right now. Mm. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know what? They overcharged us, you know, overpriced food and this. It's about the experience going to the movie theater, in my right. opinion. Um, but the last movie I saw was the last Bad Boys movie, which is really, really sad. Mm. I mean, I, I, I like good action flicks and stuff. And, and, I uh I I enjoyed the movie, but that was the last one that I actually saw in the theater. Have you um seen Nomad Land yet? Yeah, with, I saw uh, it. Francis Mord McDormand. I uh, just watched it, and I, I thought did, it was great. It, yeah, no. As a matter of fact, I saw that movie last weekend. I was uh, traveling from Orlando back to Jacksonville, and I pulled over to some theater somewhere and went to go see it. And uh, I was the only one in the theater. And uh, I don't say that to disrespect the film or Francis, because I actually had a scene with Francis McDormand 
in all of Kitteridge, uh, the HBO miniseries. So I'm, I'm a big fan of hers. Oh, wow. And did fact, you see I, three billboards of her? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I, on Mike Messier YouTube channel, I did a review of three billboards. Uh, and I predicted that she would win the Oscar and she did. As soon as I saw the movie, one of the many things on Mike Messier YouTube channel puddle is uh, Mike's. Uh, what's the address? It's what's just the go, address? Just go to YouTube and put Mike Messier in and there's about 900 videos. Can you spell that for everybody so they sure. know? Sure. Yeah. M I K E M E S S I E R. Uh, Mike now, Messier is my name. So. Can 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 I ask you? You know, speaking of three billboards, Sam Rockwell, in my opinion, does not get enough credit of being a. I I know like true cinema uh, files. They they love Sam Rockwell, but. I think he's kind of underrated by the majority of people, though. Yeah, well, he is, you know, and uh, I mean, I, I think he's a great actor. And in that movie, he was he was awesome. And uh, what was the movie about the guy that uh, the, the, the bombing? Clint, yeah, the Clint yeah, I, yeah, it was it was uh, Richard Jewell. Right. Jewell. So, I mean, again, I mean, he, he's a guy who uh you give him the <clears throat> the right movie, and he's going to knock it out of the park every single time. And that's all you can ask for for an actor, you know. Um, what is okay? So I have been noticing lately, and and is it just me? But I always like, you know, people rent movies and stuff. But when I come across a movie on the movie channels like HBO, Cinemax, Showtime, and it's one that I haven't seen in a while. I, I, I get a kick out of that. Like I get an enjoyment and I will stop and watch it. And I got to tell you, as of late, there's been some movies that have just brought me back. Um, Michael J. Fox, The Frighteners. Do you, did you ever see that movie? I don't think I did, but I'm, I'm a big fan of Michael J. Fox. That's for sure. Dude, I was looking at it because this movie was in 1996. And it had Michael J. Fox. And I don't want to ruin it, but I, I would love to have you on again and, and, and get your review of that movie. I sure. mean, everybody goes to Back to the Future uh, trilogy, which, in my opinion, is still maybe one of the best trilogies of all time. Um, I just watched a documentary about the Back to the Future. It was uh, somewhere on YouTube. It was, uh, people, it was about the Back to the Future films, the and recasting. The people, yes. Not not everybody realizes that Michael J. Fox was not the original, wasn't it? Um, Eric forget, Stoltz. Because, yes. Well, it's funny, Tuttle, because I actually had a situation uh, similar to that in a sense with Disregard the Vampire, a Mike Messier documentary, which I sent to you and hopefully you watched it. It's on YouTube and it's about my experiences making a, a film where the lead actor uh, had to drop out literally after he started filming the movie. Now, that wasn't a case like where an Eric Stoltz I didn't fire the gentleman. He, he had to leave. So it was a tough situation. We had already scheduled the movie. We already had the logistics. Mm -hmm. The venue was very expensive, and they gave us a great deal on it. So we couldn't just come back any time we wanted. We had uh, other actors and actresses taking times out of their college schedule to be part of this movie, and here we are mm -hmm. without a lead vampire. So it, it, as explained in Disregard the Vampire, a Mike Messier documentary. Once again, people can watch it on YouTube for free. Uh, I had to make some tough choices. I had to make some quick decisions. We uh, got a rock star to come into the movie, a, a mm -hmm. guy named Scorpio, who was a, a singer, and really, he did a great job. So the funny thing is, kind of like in that Michael J. Fox, Eric Stoltz situation, whereas I'm actually more sympathetic to Stoltz because it, it wasn't his fault, but in our situation, we had uh, someone who just left us high and dry, more or less, and we had to fill the void. And I think we did. And uh, that documentary and everything about it, uh, your your fine audience can enjoy it on the Mike Messi YouTube channel. You know, we we all talk about these films. It, like, I don't think people realize how many other roles that could have been played by other people. You know, like... I don't I don't know. It, it's hard to say because we all watch Back to the Future and we're like Michael J. Fox. Yes, he was perfect for the role. But who knows what Eric Stoltz would have been like in it? You know, we we have right. that in our head. 
maybe it worked out for the best. Who, I mean, who really knows? Well, I think it did. And it's also a thing where Michael J. Fox was so huge with family ties. Yep. That was appointment viewing at the time Tuttle. He was doing he, both, wasn't he? Yeah, he was filming both family ties during the day and back to the future at night. And, you know, here's the thing. At that time in the mid 80s, television stars and movie stars were two different breeds. Yeah. Like you did not go back and forth. And I don't know if anyone's ever given Michael J. Fox or the Family Ties people or the Back to the Future people credit that he kind of broke that glass ceiling for what can a TV star accomplish on film. Now, obviously, there's been other people that did it before, you mm -hmm. know, uh, but the thing is, Michael J. Fox made a big impression. Uh, here's a thing for you, buddy. I, along your lines of thinking, because I, I kind of get where you're coming from here, I had this thought the other day. I was going to do a YouTube rant on it, but I haven't done it yet. Would you be able to replace, uh, not replace, but in an alternate universe, a Mandela effect mm -hmm. of sorts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mandela effect. If, if people don't know what the Mandela effect is, it's how you perceive things or or and, and it really wasn't that way, because for the longest time, everybody thought Nelson Mandela was dead, but he really wasn't. Well, it, some yeah, people thought he was dead, right? Yeah, some, some people. Some people did. Yeah. So it's kind of a, a thing where uh, Mandela effect is like people have different memories of the same yeah. things. But let's let's the, my point is. What if you were to take the actress Glenn Close and mm. uh, she's done things like for me, the ultimate Glenn Close is Fatal, Fatal Attraction. Attraction. Yeah, right. But she's done a lot of good things. She did a movie for HBO called Strip Search with Maggie Glendenhall. That's super intense. Did you uh, like her in Damages? Because I, I don't think I saw that one, to be honest with you. But 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 for a while there, the movie people were going to do TV for uh, like a couple of years there. It was it was so strange. Like, um, man, why is it uh, missing my mind? But Jack Bauer in 24. Um, yeah, Kiefer Sutherland. Yeah, Kiefer, yeah. Kiefer, Kiefer was big. And, and well, then, yeah. He, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It just. I, I thought about that because you brought up the intermingling of right, well, and, and film. Sure. And here's, here's my thing for you and your audience to ponder. What if you were to take Glenn Close, everything that she's done, look mm -hmm. at her IMDb page, and switch her acting roles with Sigourney Weaver? And if you put Glenn Close into Alien and Aliens <laughs> and Aliens 3, and if you put Sigourney Weaver, into um fatal attraction i think that would be awesome and i think glenn close would have been really great an interesting choice in something like ghostbusters that may not oh. have worked with glenn and bill murray but maybe it would have but if you take sigourney weaver and glenn close because they both have a very similar energy to me which is intense mm -hmm. it's super intelligent sexy but sexy in kind of a uh take no prisoners type of way like, mm -hmm. this is the woman you're not going to want to forget to take out the trash. Uh, you know what I mean? So did you, did, did you watch Hillbilly Elegy? No, I didn't see that one. Oh, dude. Glenn Close was amazing in that. But she played like the grandmother, like the patriarch in the family. And they had her in a lot of makeup. Man, she absolutely killed it. She's, she's, they're both awesome. And my, my thinking was, and I don't know why it occurred to me because I, it just did, but I was watching something with one of these two ladies and it just occurred to me, Hey, wouldn't it be interesting if Sigourney was in this part? And then I said, man, if you could take certain actors and I had this whole thought, maybe as maybe you want to produce a title and I can be the guest or something, but if you yeah. take certain actors and say, what if we were to switch Snipes and Denzel? What if we were to switch Arnold and S Stallone, you know, and, and Pacino, De Niro, T take your pick. But yeah. some of them, those are kind of the obvious choices. But what if you were mm -hmm. to take some of the less John Cusack and Michael Keaton, if you were to switch oh. their careers, you know what I mean? Dude, I, 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 I'm glad that you brought up Wesley Snipe um, because I was talking about finding movies that are on the movie channels. Uh, white men can't jump. Sure. Dude. Great movie amazing movie and now can can i ask you this this is a question that i've talked about what is in your opinion the most quotable movie 
Oh, well, that's a great question. I mean, I would probably, uh, for some reason, Animal House comes to mind. Everybody uh, says Caddyshack. Well, I mean, Animal House just came to mind because I, I think, that, I mean, just the, just the fact that John Belushi is wearing that T-shirt that says college. Mm -hmm. And he's obviously a little bit older. He's a slightly older student, as we used to say. And he's he's just got that crazy John Belushi face. And then it's what what is the line, you know, fat, dumb and stupid is no way, no way to go through life, son. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, I mean, I, I think that's a quotable movie. Um, can I, can I tell you, Kevin Costner has two humongous movies that I think are very quotable. Bull Durham. Bull yep. Durham is so quotable. And this movie was on the movie channels the other day, too. Ten Cup. Well, Tin Cup is my um, favorite. I mean, my favorite's a strong word, but one of my favorite movies with Don Johnson. And uh, it's interesting because going back to Bull Durham, there's a scene in that movie that takes place at a Biff Burger or Beef Burger. Yeah. And if you've never been through North Carolina, or if you ever do go through North Carolina, I strongly recommend going to Biff Burger or Beef Burger. There's one in Greensboro. I think there's a few more left. This place is a lot of fun. It's it's the best, cheapest hamburger you'll ever eat. They're like these smothered uh, hamburgers in barbecue sauce. They marinate them oh. for, for hours, and they're just like 99 cents, and they have like um, just so many good things, man. And uh, I hadn't been there in years, and I had actually gone pescatarian for two and a half years. But when I came through Greensboro, I said, well, sorry, Mr. Cow, I'm going to have to eat you. Because today I'm going old school and I'm going to Biff Burger. Hey, this why doesn't Kevin Costner why 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 do people shit on his acting career? Like I uh I enjoyed Waterworld. I enjoyed the postman. You know, the guy's got a great, great resume. Why why do people like take a shit on his acting ability? I think there's just a thing where um you know, I think there's just a thing where sometimes something starts with one thing and then it just builds and it gets cemented. I mean, years ago, there was a there was a hateful rumor about a top Hollywood actor having something to do with a rodent. And people talked about that for 10 or 15 years in the pop culture world. And that kind of. Oh, yeah. Off. We're talking about Richard Gere with the gerbil in his ass. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I was trying to be a little more discreet. Uh, but no, yeah, you no, got it. But no. I mean, everybody knows that one. But sure. yeah, everybody knows. that. But one. my point is that sometimes things and maybe it's fading away now, but sometimes things just get started. And people I remember I liked Waterworld, too. And people just kind of crapped on it. And then it go, went from there. I mean, you know, oh. from. For me, you talked about Wesley Snipes. I was lucky enough to work with Wesley in the movie Hard Luck, which was a Mario Van Peebles directed film. And I'm telling uh -huh. you, Tuttle, Mario Van Peebles is a great uh, director. He's a great uh, writer and a great actor, and really a nice guy. But it's like, why isn't Mario Van Peebles discussed in the same sentence mm -hmm. as a Spike Lee? I don't what, know the answer to that. What is the best? in your opinion, the best actor turned director, in my opinion, I, it, I think now Clint Eastwood is going to go down as a better director than an actor in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, I was, I was going to say Eastwood, and I think what's cool about Eastwood is that, you know, um, a Million Dollar Baby and so many, uh, Grand Torino. The Mule, the Mule he did. Right, yeah, and the, the thing is, I, oh, yeah, I did see The Mule. Yeah, that was a good one. I saw them the last year or so. Um, but basically, Eastwood, his movies, in a way, surpassed <clears throat> those spaghetti westerns. Nothing against the spaghetti western. They were great. But the, the depth of uh, Eastwood's films uh, are much surpassed those spaghetti westerns. And similar to what I try to do myself, uh, Tuttle, you know, with uh, Disregard the Vampire, the documentary I mentioned. People can watch that on YouTube. It's won 10 awards. I got to the point with that project where I felt like, hey, I've got to change this up a little bit. And part of that process was to retitle the piece, uh, A Distance from Avalon, When the Dying and the Dead Reunite, which I've since written as a screenplay, a stage play, and now a novel that's available on Amazon. So okay. what happened? Yeah, go ahead. Well, no, 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 no. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I, I wanted to ask you, there was this, and I forget the name of it. Sorry. 
I'm outside right now. It's bike week and people are driving by. So um, I wanted to ask you, there was this movie that I saw. It was like a vampire movie, but it was more of a con comedy, something in the shadows. Uh, do you know the one that I'm talking about? Um, I don't. I, I can look it up real quick. A, a vampire yeah. movie. Yeah, it was something in the shadows or what we do. I, I forget exactly what it was. The shadows but, of the vamp. What do we do in the shadows? TV yeah, series. Yeah, what we do in the shadows. Yes, but it was also a movie as well, too. But I think that is from um, um, the guy that did the um, Jojo Rabbit. What TV oh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. He's he's an up and coming actor as well, too. I mean, I'm not actor director. Yeah, well, I mean, here's the thing, man, this industry, Hollywood, entertainment, whatever you want to call it, you really do have to be diverse, you know, as an acting coach for years, Tuttle, and people can look at my research on uh, core acting on MikeMessier.com. Uh, but for as an acting coach, what I always told my acting students or my, you know, people I worked with, whatever you want to call it, I said, go see a film and see a George Clooney movie. At the beginning of that George Clooney movie, or at the end, one way or the other, you're going to see that George Clooney was the star of this film. Well, guess what? Producer, or co-producer, or executive producer, George Clooney. Uh, you know what they're I mean? Getting more, can... They're getting more of a deal on the back end, though, aren't they, when they're doing stuff like that? Well, no, my, well, my point is, Julie Delpy. I just saw a great movie by Julie Delpy, who's an amazingly beautiful woman, a French actress, before sunrise, before sunset. So I go to see this movie, uh, My Zoe, and I see that at the end of the film, guess what? Written and directed by Julie Delpy. And uh, the point is that when I talked to my acting students, I always said, you know what? Here was the thing that always came up, Tuttle. The acting students would have a problem. Um, I would say you have to produce, you have to generate your own project. That's the easiest way to put it. You have to generate your own project. Now, some yeah. of the actors would say to me, well, I just want to be an actor. I don't want to, I don't want to write anything. I don't want to produce anything. You I don't want to control your anything. career. Yeah, I mean, well, basically. Right. And the point is, for, for whatever reason, they felt like if they were to produce something, which basically means pay for it, pay for something to come into fruition, if we're going to kind of decode some of these words, because sometimes we don't know what produce means. Well, at its core, produce means to pay for that's how i interpret it you know what i mean now that doesn't necessarily mean that every producer is putting their own money out of pocket to make a project but a lot of times it does so when acting students would say well i don't want to produce anything or i don't want to contribute to making this movie because i just want to be a great actor i say well tell that to tarantino because while you're sitting here complaining uh, you know tarantino is acting in his movies like pulp fiction but if he didn't direct and write that thing, he wouldn't have been in that movie. So yeah. there you go. You've got to generate your own projects. And for me, that's what I've been doing. Now, Mike, tell people. And one last question. And, and then I want you to promote your stuff because I, I, I don't want to go long. But I do want you to have you back on the show. I would love for you to watch the movie, The Frighteners. Sounds starring like a plan. Michael J. Fox. I would love to get your opinion on it, but okay. why? Why has Atlanta? Because I could, I could see the Hollywood shifting to the East Coast. I really, really do because you know everybody's thinking, you know, liberal California. You know, they're going to keep things shut down. We're not able to produce stuff. But Atlanta, why has Atlanta become a great place that people are filming a lot of movies now? Well, I'll give you two words to answer that. Tyler Perry. That's the yeah, two-word answer. I, that's what I was going to think. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I took a look at Tyler Perry. Uh, and trust me, I'm an actor, too. So, I mean, I've, uh, I've applied to get some auditions from Tyler Perry's company, and I'd love to be in the mix with him. I'll be the token white guy, you know, whatever. But. Yeah. Tyler Perry has got a beautiful studio set studio. up there in Atlanta. I looked at the website and I was salivating. You know, I was like, man, this would be such a great place to make movies. And I'm really kind of fascinated and intrigued by that studio system. Uh, going back to like, you know, Hammer Horror Films, which in the last three or four years with making, you know, A Distance from Avalon, When the Dying and the 
Dead Reunite, I've really become intrigued by Hammer horror film. And, yeah. uh, you know, so for me, the answer would be uh, Tyler Perry. And here's the other answer that's just <clears throat> a very straightforward answer is tax credits. And I, I don't know mm. how much you or your audience know about that. No, they but- are. They're, they're giving them big because they got to, they got to, uh, I think when they film, they get the tax credits. But at the end, you always say, filmed in georgia uh, type thing that they do i mean the walking dead uh, films everything there too well here's the thing i will give credit to my old buddy uh, steve feinberg up in rhode island he was the film and, and his assistant carol conley they're really nice people who are always hustling for rhode island to get as many movies as they could and they did get some good movies there including hard luck that i had the scene with wesley snipes and you have states like connecticut where uh, you know, my friend David Gear makes some movies and they were getting things like uh, the Meryl Streep film, Hope Springs, that I had a scene with Hope Springs, uh, with Meryl Streep and Elizabeth Shue in Hope Springs. So the thing is, if Rhode Island and Connecticut are hustling with their tax credits, imagine what Atlanta, Georgia, you know, Georgia and other states. And it's very competitive. I mean, you see yeah. that the states are competing. Their film offices are literally competing. Baby driver. Baby Driver was filmed there in Georgia, in Atlanta. In, yep. in Atlanta. Yeah, it was it was it was a great one. So, Mike, tell people how they can check you out. And uh, I want I'm going to get my producer to get back with you. So sounds good. Matter of fact, well, go ahead real quick, because uh, go, the golf cart people are coming to pick up my golf cart. So I only got like 30 seconds. Sorry, Mike Messier, Mike Messier dot com. M-I-K-E-M-E-S-S-I-E-R dot com. Amazon has got my book, A Distance from Avalon, When the Dying and the Dead Reunite. Subscribe mm-hmm. to me on YouTube, Mike Messier YouTube channel for free. And there mm-hmm. you have it. All right, Mike. I enjoyed the chat, man. Let's talk soon. Thanks, Total. Have a great weekend, brother. From the Vapor Shades Hobo Fish Camp. Man, maybe I would have way more sex partners in my life if I just threw caution to the wind. It's the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Cuddles Daily Podcast is brought to you by StitchYouUp.com. For your embroidery, screen printing, vinyl, and direct-to-garment printing needs, visit StitchYouUp.com. StitchYouUp specializes in custom caps, shirts, decals, and anything you want to personalize. Whether it's one item or large orders, they can handle any size. Unsure about what you want? Let StitchYouUp help you with your logo design. Visit StitchYouUp.com. Or contact them, eric at stitchyouup.com. Stitch You Up, definitely not your grandma's embroidery. Nerd, radio personality, and hot talk satirizer. You're listening to the Tuttle Podcast. All right, guys, welcome back to the Tuttle Daily Podcast, last segment of the day. Make sure you go to my YouTube channel, and I will be doing another live stream tonight at 8 on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Tuttle. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell button. And if you have a chance, give me a thumbs up because what I've been hearing, the more and more like thumbs up that you get, the more your videos show up in the algorithm of YouTube. So I'm trying to build that audience. youtube.com slash Tuttle starts tonight at eight on my channel. So. One of the things that I wanted to talk about, I guess they're on the verge of passing the next stimulus package. People are going to be getting their stimulus check. I have been working my whole entire life. I have been working my ass off. This is the longest that I have gone without work. Now, I, I, technically, I'm still working. I'm making money off of this podcast. I am keeping up with the financials. Paid, I, I pay taxes every single year. I've done it. And guess what? I didn't get my first stimulus check. Did not get my first stimulus check. So what's up with that? And I know I'm going to be furious if I do not get my second one. Because I got to tell you, you know what would happen if you did not pay the government? Uncle Sam would be after your ass. They would either throw you in jail, garnish your wages, do whatever they needed. But when they owe you money, they're hard to get a hold of. 
nowhere to be found. Dog piss Willie. And I, it, it's just not fair. That's why I, I'm mad at all politicians. That's why I do not trust any of them at all. The goddamn Catholic Church, Joel Osteen, they got bailed out, and they don't even pay taxes. And my dumbass at the hobo fish camp didn't get shit. But if I owed them money, goddamn, they would be knocking my door down just to get it. One last thing before I leave for the day. Don't know if you read the story, but cancel culture strikes again. Now, I will admit, some of the characters in Disney movies are racist. Like, they are. They're caricatures of different races. Like, look, look at Dumbo. The crows. Why did they sound so black? I don't even know if that, that might even be racist for me to say. And they're also with the aristocrats, you know, the, the, the cat movie that they did. I guess they had a Siamese cat that wore like the pointy hat, had the buck teeth, I guess, once again, eating with chopstick. But I, I came across this old commercial. I, I don't know if it might have been with Schoolhouse Rock or something. But they ended up playing this video to show the differences between cultures. Celebrate our differences. We got to celebrate our differences. Ooga booga do, ooga booga do. We got to celebrate our differences. If that's not racist, I don't know what is. I mean. If you heard the Ooga Booga thing, that was representing Africa. If you heard the uh, nachos and burritos thing, that was Mexican people. <laughs> it was just, it could not, oh, chick cha ching cha chong chick cha ching cha chong Yeah, they were talking about Asians in that one. So, yeah, that one definitely needed to go. Going to take off, guys. Don't forget about the live stream tonight at 8 on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Tuttle. Find me anywhere on my website, Tuttle.net. Hope you guys have a great day. Hope you're safe, and I will talk to you tomorrow. And that's the show for today. Thanks for listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hey, don't be a dickhead. Do us a favor. Like, share, and subscribe to the show. Also, Check out the Tuttle category at 315live.com. The Tuttle Daily Podcast is brought to you by the Vapor Shades Hobo Fish Camp. Do you want some cool-ass sunglasses? Check out vaporshades.com. Also brought to you by Starfire Transport, stitchyouup.com, pocketpairclub.com. Special thanks to show intern Hannah and Charlie Lamo for their contributions. Additional imaging and production is provided by CCA Productions. Facebook.com slash CCA Productions Presents. Show voiceover service is brought to you by jcvoiceover.com. That guy's got a damn sexy voice. You should hire him. Check out jcvoiceover.com. If you want to help support the show, go to paypal.me slash Tuttle on the radio. Comments? Concerns? Or do you just want to let Tuttle know he's being a dickhead? Tuttle at gmail.com. That's Tuttle with two Ds at gmail.com. Leave a voicemail at 407-270-3044. To follow all of Tuttle's social media, go to Tuttle.net. Thanks again for all your support, and we'll see you tomorrow on the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hey, yo, Terry, what's going on?